Alex, thank you very much for joining us for this eMultiple Sclerosis Review Program. Thank you for the invitation, Michael. So to start with, can you just summarize your current approach to evaluating and treating spasticity in people with MS? So I start with talking to the patient and also the caregiver if they're available. Ask the patient how spasticity affects his or her uh, daily living or his work, his or her work. How, if it causes any kind of pain, if it uh, interrupts sleep. Um, so, and if there's anything in particular about the spasticity that particularly bothers them, then I would perform a thorough physical examination. And this really needs to be done in person. You have to hold and touch the person and move, especially the affected limbs. After that, we would discuss options for management from simple, conservative, non-pharmacologic, all the way up to more sophisticated pharmacologic uh, interventions we will have to discuss the risk and benefits of each available option. And uh, um, then uh, the patient will have to follow up, you know, every couple of months or weeks and to see how uh, our intervention is helping him or her. For mild spasticity, we always start with an exercise program, which can be a home program. It has to include stretching. And even as your spasticity gets worse, always include the stretching. Um, if your uh, spasticity is a little bit mild to moderate, we may need to involve uh, formal physical therapy into the program, and we may have to start oral medications for uh, spasticity. We usually start with uh, an oral medication such as baclofen uh, or tizanidine, um, and then we can titrate up as tolerated by the patient and as we see effect. As you get to more moderate or higher level spasticity, you may have to combine medic oral medications, again, uh, taking into consideration the tolerability for the patient. If you have significant focal spasticity, such as spasticity affecting uh, one or two limbs, then you may uh, include uh, botulinum toxin injections for sp focal spasticity. However, in, in the more um, moderate to severe end of the spectrum, uh, if you have generalized spasticity, especially if it involves the lower extremities, then you may have to consider the use of an intrathecal baclofen pump uh, for that kind of spasticity. And at the very tail end of the management spectrum, if all uh, of your conservative uh, interventions have not been so successful, you may have to refer to surgery. Uh, surgery per se will not be um, managing the spasticity, but they can help you with the consequences of spasticity, such as joint contractures and um, malposition of, of joints and uh, limbs. Uh, so that would be um, uh, our, my, my steps in managing a patient with uh, uh, spasticity. Yeah, thank you. That is an excellent description of uh, really all of the the therapies that are kind of part of your um, part of your armamentarium. Can you tell me a little bit about how effective these approaches are, and specifically what some of the limitations of these treatments are? So uh, they're not perfect. So they all have some of their limitations. For example, uh, oral medications um, have a can have some side effects such as sedation and drowsiness, and a, num a number of them can affect uh, your liver. So you have to uh, monitor your uh, liver function uh, as the patient uh, increases uh, the dose. Um, botulinum toxin injections do require the patient to come into the clinic um, to get the injection, and they may have to do this every three months for, uh, to maintain uh, the effect. You need a, a trained provider to give the injection. An intrathecal baclofen pump uh, definitely requires good patient compliance uh, to maintain the pump, to make sure the pump does not run dry. And um, the pump does need to be replaced after about seven years. Um, um, so it's important to uh, con consistently monitor how the patient is responding um, to your uh, interventions. Cost is always uh, a concern for, for any of these medications and devices. Uh, and uh, insurance coverage um, for these medications and devices are also a challenge sometimes. Well, thank you very much. This was a very informative discussion, uh, and thank you for joining us for the program. Thank you for having me.